Hello everybody, welcome. Today we are going to be looking at getting the best quality from your DJI Mini 3 Pro. In this video in particular, we are going to be looking at the settings to get the best quality from the camera. Uh, in further videos, I'm going to be looking at the drone settings, the best hardware to use, and things like that. But as I say for this one, we are purely looking at the best video settings for the best quality footage. So let's get started. Okay guys, let's jump straight in. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it from photo into video, or just make sure we've got video selected. And then down the bottom here, we are going to see a little camera. It will either have Pro or Auto written on it. Uh, we're going to click on it until it says Pro. Would you believe that Pro is going to give us the most professional looking footage? And the reason for this is once we're in Pro, it's going to lock all our settings in. Uh, nothing's going to be changing whilst we're flying around. We don't want the exposure or the white balance changing. And um, this is basically going to lock it in and uh, make our footage look more professional. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, click down the bottom here and we can see we've got a whole range of options. Now, if we go to white balance, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that automatic is taken off. We do not want the white balance changing as we're flying around. Uh, this can happen, particularly if um, the light situation changes, if a cloud comes over, or if your drone uh, changes direction. Uh, this can affect the white balance, and a changing white balance as we're flying is going to look really unprofessional. So we've taken that off, and then um, once we've taken that off, we need to make sure it's set to the correct thing. Uh, basically, keeping it simple, if we move it to the left, it's going to make everything look blue, and if we move it to the right, it's going to make everything look red. Um, we want it to look uh, as white as possible, um, nice neutral colours, and we do this by putting it in the middle. Usually it's around um, 5,000 Kelvin to 6,000. Um, in here, actually, I've got a bit of orange light, so um, I've adjusted it to compensate. Um, so there's no hard or fast rules for white balance. You basically just need to look at it and make sure it hasn't got a blue or orange tint. The next one we're going to look at is a resolution. And what I'm going to do here is basically put this up to 4K. Obviously, the bigger the resolution, the higher quality. It does come with a larger file size, uh, but there's going to be no downside at shooting at 4K other than the file size. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to look at are the frames per second. Now, I can't give you a hard, fast rule for this. Uh, what you're going to want to use is going to change depending on what the footage is for. For example, if I wanted some nice footage shot for my YouTube channel um, and I'm shooting and I'm also using uh, other footage that I'm shooting at 24 frames a second, I'm going to want everything to match. So I would shoot that at 24 frames per second. However, if you don't have a project in mind and you just simply want the highest quality, 60 frames per second will give you the smoothest possible footage. And if you're not sure what you want it for or what the um, other timeline is that you're using, if you shoot at 60K, it won't look too bad if you drop it onto 24. So I'd recommend shooting in 60K. So while we're on this point, I also want to point out that if you have your frames per second or your frame rate set between uh, 24 and 30, it's got this little HQ after it. Now I think that stands for high quality, and this is uh, DJI's attempt to put HDR onto the Mini 3. Uh, what they actually do is it shoots two different ISOs at the same time and then um, it blends them together. So um, I actually don't like this very much. It can, it can create noise, uh, particularly if you're flying at night time, it will look awful. Um, it will sort of blur your image. So I would actually recommend shooting at higher frame rates to avoid using this feature. Um, however, if you're shooting in the daytime, um, the grain won't look as bad. So um, you'll get away with it. But as I say, um, at night time, never shoot uh, with anything with HQ written after it. And for the rest of the time, I'd match it to the frame rate you would want, or just set it to 60. <laughs> set it to 60 could have saved me a lot of time there. <laughs> but uh, you've got all the information you need now. Okay, so next we've got uh, the color mode, which is either normal or uh, de cine like now, um, I've got it set normal at the moment, and you can see the colours are nice and saturated. It gives us a, like a nice look. And then if I switch it to de like it goes like flat. It kind of it actually looks, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look very nice at all. And the reason it's done this is because it's actually, um, it's, it's, it's picking up more details in the highlights and the shadows. So um, it's actually also changed it from shooting in normal at 8-bit into de like at 10-bit. And by shooting at 10-bit, we get a lot more information, a lot more detail. So actually, we can do a lot more with the footage. 
So if you want the highest quality possible, you actually want to shoot in D-Cine-like, but then you need to edit it afterwards because um, it will look horrible if you don't edit it, but once it's edited, it will look a lot better. You'll be able to get the best you possibly can out of the footage. And shooting at 10 bit on a small drone is something uh, really amazing. So it's well worth looking into. So um, as I say, for the best possible quality, shoot with decent alike, edit it in uh, some further software later on. Uh, stuff like DaVinci Resolve is amazing for color grading and it's also free software. Um, so it's something to look out for, but you can also use things like Premiere Pro and iMovie. I say, if you really don't want to be messing around with that, you can shoot in normal, but I say the quality won't be as good as decent alike. Now, um, the next one, well, it says the coding format's the next thing, and at the moment we've only got the option to shoot in H.265, and that's because we're shooting at uh, such a high frame rate in uh, 4K. If we move that down to 30 frames per second, uh, we can see that we've also now got the option for uh, H6, uh, H.264. Now, um, I would always shoot in H.265. It's going to be the uh, best compression, and it will look better for the, um, the higher quality images, uh, particularly when you're exporting them. Now, uh, MP4 and MOV, there's no real difference for me personally. Um, the, the difference would be so slight, it's not even worth mentioning. So um, I just personally keep mine at MP4. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the ISO. Now, as you can see, I've got the ISO set to 400. That is a bad idea. Um, you're going to want to be shooting at ISO 100 where possible. Um, say in here, it looks really dark now. So what I can do is compensate that with the shutter but it's still a bit dark, but I'm indoors. Uh, you're probably gonna be flying your drone outdoors, the light will be a lot better, and um, you will always have um, a better quality image of shooting in a low ISO of 100. So um, always keep your ISO at 100, unless you're shooting at night time and there's no way of avoiding it. Now shutter speed is gonna be a bit more of a tricky one because um, if you don't have ND filters, you're just gonna to have to go to the one that has the correct exposure. So in this case, um, where it's quite dark in here, I'm gonna to have to shoot at 60th. And this is gonna look, um, this will actually look, this, this actually won't look too bad. If you're flying outside on a really bright sunny day, you might find that you're gonna to have to set it up to like, um, like 3200 or something like really high, which is not what you wanna be doing. Um, ideally, you want to be shooting at twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting at the frame rate of 60 frames per second, you're going to want this to be 120. Now, in this room, it's not too bad, um, although it is a bit dark still. I would, I would personally um, want it as bright as possible now, and you'd have to shoot at a 60th. Now, um, I say, if you go outside and it's too bright and you've got to shoot at a really um, fast shutter speed, Okay guys, so next we're gonna move on to shutter speed. Now this is a really tricky one. Um, you're not really gonna have much choice. If your ISO is set to uh, 100, and then um, your aperture is always set at 1.7 on the Mini 3 Pro, uh, you're not really gonna have a choice unless you have ND filters. So what you need to do, if you don't have an ND filter, you just need to set it to whatever makes the exposure looks nice on the, um, on the screen. Or you can also look at your histogram, which again, we'll be covering in a later video. Um, and that will be that. However, if you are flying on a bright sunny day, you might find to do that, you're gonna to need to be shooting at around uh, like two, one two thousandth of a second, which is gonna be really fast. And if you're flying close to any object, it's gonna give you quite, um, it, the footage won't look very smooth. Uh, there'll be no motion blur, which is you want a slight amount of motion blur and you ideally want to be shooting at um, twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 60 frames a second, you're going to want it shot about 120th of a second for the shutter speed. And if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, you're going to want it at 160th of, the, um, 160th of a second for the shutter speed. Now, the way you do that is by using ND filters. So basically what ND filters are is they're like a kind of sunglasses for your camera. Uh, by putting them in front of the camera, it allows you to shoot at a slower shutter speed, meaning you will get the motion blur in your footage um, at the right shutter speed, which is exactly what you want. So <laughs> if you have ND filters, use them and try to get a shutter speed at twice the frame rate. And if you don't have ND filters, all you can do is shoot at the correct exposure. It won't be the best quality footage, but it will be the best you can get without the ND filter. Now, the only other thing down the bottom is the aperture. We can't change the aperture. It just says it's a 1.7 and it has to stay at 1.7. Okay, guys, so they are the best settings you can get for the best quality footage from your DJI Mini Pro. If you do have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, I do answer all my comments. And if you have any questions, I will likely make a video to explain it. 
I hope everything this makes sense. And I say we've got more videos coming out to get the best quality from your camera. I'm going to have um, drone settings and uh, the best hardware to use. So um, hit that subscribe button if that interests you. Hit the like button if you found this video useful. And I hope to see you in the next one.